Well, this is another session of texture creation here. And what I want to work on is uh, two sort of sample textures. Maybe we'll get to three. I'll try and make them somewhat quick in our process here. So I'm going to grab my brush. Um, I'm going to start with a rust sort of setup here. So when you're doing something like rust on an object, we'll say that this is our area. And we'll go ahead and zoom on in to give us some space. I'm going to go ahead and start with my uh, sort of marquee tool here. I'm just going to pick out some pieces. Um, now this could be, you could use the lasso tool as well, but you're not going to get probably quite the same edginess to it as you would with, say, um, the polygon lasso tool. So I mean, now if I swap over to the um, polygonal, right, I get much harder edges. I don't have to draw nearly as much. Let's say this is kind of what I'm going for. Although I, I do like the lasso tool also. Um, but it's going to feel much more wavery. Uh, it's got your signature to it, you know. Instead of, maybe if you draw really sharp edges, then this is perfect for you. But, all right, so I'm going to make some kind of rust so I can jump on over to my fill tool and I can grab some sort of mm, brown. Depends on how much rust. It should probably be like a moderate mid zone because it'll give you room to work up. And down, mm, that's even too light it feels. Let's go a little darker. All right, ah, that feels pretty good. All right, so um, at this point, I could keep the selections. I probably should just, because then you can draw into them. Um, you can mask it later, now that you have your own layer with that selection. But I'll just sort of keep it. So let's now go over to brushes. So I have a, a lot of different brushes. Um, but you could grab almost any sort. I'm going to specifically try and grab uh, something, something dirty and grungy. And let's see what happens when we... Uh, now, uh, you got you got a couple options here. you got two options. Um, you can adjust. I think you should make a new layer and adjust. Um, the book that we're using here, oh, yeah. Beginner's Guide to Digital Painting, does suggest that you just switch the mode of the brush to like a multiply. I'm going to switch a layer to multiply. And I'll kind of paint in here pieces. Uh, make sure this brush has, it's got a nice little flow. So immediately I'm getting these nice sort of gritty darkening results. Um, the opacity is at 40%. I could probably, I think that's probably pretty good it gives me a lot of variation in there uh, and then we can make a new layer and we'll switch the new layer to probably screen probably screen but I kind of want a little more orange now so I'm gonna go ahead and up that a little bit and push it a little further into the orange zone this is why I might not want screen I'm gonna kind of just try and hit up some of these areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a very cool little brush, uh, but maybe you want one that has a little more oomph. Eh, maybe not. I mean, I kind of really like what this is doing. Yeah. All right. 
Okay, so now we've got our dark, we've got our light. Um, now we just need one more new layer. We'll do that uh, under the rust layer. And we can just get like a standard brush. And we also want to probably inverse the selection here. And we'll grab ourselves a nice soft edge brush. Oops, it's got a funky pattern to it now. Well, let's try that. I kind of like that. See, that's got a nice little texture bit to it. That could work for us since we've got that texture already going. I just kind of swap it over. Now, this could just be a regular soft brush would be fine um, for what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to go back to selecting that darker, darker grit, maybe a mid-tone of it. And then I'm just going to kind of lightly paint in these rust zones. Don't be afraid to hold down the shift to give yourself a little more of what you need. Just going to generally airbrush that in on the underside, right? Because this is sort of the... Uh, the flow of rustiness. get some of that darker stuff in there. It'll kind of create some more gradients. Now the issue here is that we still have all these hard edges everywhere, right? So what you kind of want to do next is you got to work into those. Um, and kind of solidify these edges a little bit more. It's underneath it so we don't have to worry about overpainting it. We do need to get these to feel a little more real. So What we probably want, um, I'm going to try two things. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to put, I'm going to apply a, a stroke. Kick that size down quite a bit. Or maybe an inner shadow. I think that's going to work better. We'll put an inner shadow in there. So it kind of gives little bits of edges. Now, that means that I do have to go back in here and now do some kind of tweaking bits to it, right? So let's go ahead and... F Ooh, it's going to be a little tricky to find that brush again. We'll just add another brush. It's fine.
I'm going to go do an overpaint. We're going to probably have to do a little bit of hand work here because at this point, eh, software might work. At this point, we got these edges that I don't think work for us here. Yeah, I really don't like these edges. I like what's going on inside of them. I just don't like what's happening outside of them. mostly these hard edges that I don't like. Probably should just go through and maybe give a little touch up to the edgings. Um, we start doing little bits of things like this. What am I talking about here? Multiply. It is, it's these edges. These edges were too too hard and perfect. Uh, and that's what the book's going to have you do. The book wants you to kind of make these nice little hard edges, but honestly, I think in the end, they, they do so many change-ups to everything. Well, uh, let's go ahead and... Um, something I always like to do, eventually, is I'll just drop everything. I'm just going to drop the layers and flatten all these layers. So let's grab all these. I do like that effect. Let's do that too. And then we'll go ahead and merge these layers. So they're all one. It means that we can kind of work with them a little bit better. Alright. Set that to 100 so I get my complete. Alright. There we go. So now we're kind of working into it a little bit more again. because these edges they're too sharp for like some kind of rust effect and this probably needs a little bit more let's change this again There it is. Let's also adjust this um, color dynamic a bit. Hue and brightness jitter. There we go. Perfect. Now this brush that I have is making a lot of this work happen. Um, but that's kind of the point. You really should find some brushes that help you with sort of these rusting effects or uh, texture effects. Um, oh, this one's getting a little out of control. Ooh, a little much. Let's go ahead and kill that color dynamic again. So with uh, with the book technique, you don't need that. But uh, when I start getting with this stuff, I like I like a little extra. And I I also enjoy sort of adding these sort of shadow effects. And then here's where we'd probably want. 
So I'm coming down. Uh, let's go back in now. We'll select this color, just a standard, and uh, a new layer to work on top of and kind of push back into it. Soft brush again. There we go. Uh, underneath it. Mm. Looks like we also need a little bit of hard edge stuff in here. Take that on up to 100 so we can see it. And if you just kind of paint through here and clean up a lot of this, and then kind of paint extra bits, you can get a lot more out of it then. I don't think I like that soft round though. <clears throat> Let's go see if we can find my my other brush that I like. Hmm. That's a little not what I want, but you can see you can find all these brushes, all these kind of cool brushes all over the place. Um what do we got here? Is this it? There it is. This is just my little this is just a straight up whatever brush, just uh, there for pure cleaning purposes and edging things up. So I'm going to go ahead and go in here. I'm going to clean up some of this. I'm going to trace the edges here with the black inks and clean it up with the gray. Uh, you could also probably use an eraser, but since it's on a gray black background, um, and rice would be okay, but then you better drop these down, I guess, right? And then you can race into it. Um, I don't know. I feel like that's a little more work. Um, but whatever you need to do, if you need a clear transparency kind of effect going on, then yeah, you, you definitely would want an eraser brush. Um, I didn't like either, any of these so much. This is kind of what the book's telling you to do. I'm not a fan of those. I don't think that they they didn't work quite how I wanted them to. Um, so let's delete those out. I'm just going to work with this one big patch here, which I did like. I thought this came out nice. And yes, if you want an eraser to work on this stuff, then, you know, go get it. Come in through here and erase all of that out. out. Remember, it's supposed to be peeling up some kind of paint. That's why you can kind of do it like this. You can even kind of add other pieces in here. Or, uh, you know, what kind of works really well is um, you can kind of clone stamp some of it. And over here, this um, lighting effect is kind of working against this. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to get rid of that for now should be nice but it's not being very nice
probably where a highlight is going to help. So let's select a little bit of a highlight in here. Uh, maybe too much there. Let's make it a real gentle highlight. There we go. And that's now finally starting to get kind of the effect we want. The rust is arguably a trickier one probably to do. Now, even if I take away this background, sort of this effect going on, and we can come back through, and still you need to kind of uh, get rid of a lot of these extra rust pieces through here to harden up that edge, because it should have a hard edge for something like rust. Just not as hard as the other selection pieces that I was making, those I didn't like so much. And now we can kind of go and hard line out the edges here. And it's starting to really, I think it's starting to really work much better now. Um, also, I'm going to go back in and soft round these sort of dirty marks. And uh, I would prefer those with that same brush I used initially. It would be nice with that texture set to it. But, uh, you know, even if I don't have it, that's okay. that kind of represents that the rust is sort of expanding but hasn't fully gone all the way out.
this bubbling should really be whatever color it is that you need it to be. And it should be used sort of sparingly. You can see how that starts to give you though the effect of like peeling rust. It's all about the highlights and the dark lows. Um, I don't really want to spend too much more on this one because it's it's kind of like whatever you need it to be in the end. Um, and these highlights will have to be kind of whatever you need them to be. So the yellow, if the wall was like yellow, for example, you'd want these to be you want these to be yellow. Again, this would be better off probably as a screen layer. down below too so we're not overlapping anything but you can see how that makes a fairly rusty kind of gross effect um, and that is sort of a sort of a rust confirmation um, I think there's other spots that work out a little bit better um, you want this rust to really kind of run. Uh, getting a nice texture swath put in there and then giving off this effect of of it yeah. really rising up here. There we go. bubbling before it actually breaks and peels. See that? Like that? Right there? And then hitting the top of it with a bit of dark. So it looks like it's actually peeling. And repeat. And then uh, don't forget the uh, little bits of sort of a uh, little bits of drizzle.
which are better made with a soft brush anyway. Push them through like that. There you go. So you can see it really working up here in this area through this whole section. And that's uh, some rust texturing.